Uh, welcome uh, to the October 16th public meeting of the Jackson Board of Selectmen. It's 4.30, so we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 4.32. Thank you all for coming. We're glad you're here. Um, our first item of business, agenda one on the uh, meeting agenda is to amend and approve the minutes from our uh, public meeting on October 2nd. Uh, both of you had an opportunity to review the minutes. Yes, sir. Do either one of you have any uh, amendments to the minutes to propose? I'll entertain a motion then to approve them as written if either one of you want to make one. So moved. Second. Okay. And so. The only small item I wanted to make an amendment on was uh, under visitors. It's Penny Miller with an R at the end, not uh, just a just a typo there. Other than that, I had no um, uh, edits that I saw. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. And thank you. Okay. And our non public session from October second. Uh, and the minutes were sealed, so I'll go ahead and have you initial that. <coughs> sealed minutes. Thank you. Very good. Update on the action items that we I came up with. I accidentally only printed one of those. Last week? Okay. We'll share. Uh, Bill. You wanted to give a quick uh, update on uh, building inspector. We said that we would have a three-month review with Kevin back <coughs> this morning and uh, took a couple of notes just to let you know what's going on. Three-month review of the building inspector with Kevin. There have been no negative responses toward Kevin that we know. His job is going okay. He stated he's been on it's very busy. And... Um, Doing the building for inspections, there are currently eight houses um, with permits under construction and um, 35 outstanding permits for smaller projects. He has completed his residential certification and uh, is working on the com commercial certification in the coming months, if uh, hopefully in, in the short months. Um, the Bob Goodrow, the fire inspector, has been working with Kevin says he's uh, impressed with Kevin's desire and zeal to get the job done correctly. And uh, we will look at another review in three months, probably in January, February. Excellent. Thanks, Bill. John, you had the uh, action item you were going to, are we still trying to get a hold of Andrew Beal? About yeah, we have a funeral party? this weekend, so I think everything's kind of on hold until right. after that. Okay. Keep us posted on that. Uh, Julie, um, you were going to review the budget about the uh, underground uh, piping for the garden and electrical. And you, I guess we can update it. the conservation committee felt like they had half those funds in their budget. Uh, if that's something we were interested in going ahead with a $1,080 uh, invoice was provided to us at the last meeting around that. Um, you guys want to address that now? Take it up under old business? What's your pleasure? Take it up under old business, I guess. Okay. Fine with you. Yeah. And uh, also going to look into the school vault for past town meeting minutes. And we're, what's the progress report on that? To get a little introduction to the vault before we come in. Okay. And, and then we should hopefully be able to come up with. Okay. 
Excellent. And you're going over there with uh, Alice Pepper? We're meeting her there. Yes. Okay. Great. Keep us posted on that. That'll be fun. Yeah, it's quite the vault. One day. Okay. No uh, action items for Julie. Uh, <coughs> upcoming meetings. Our next meeting after this is scheduled for November 4th. Or that's actually the election at the Whitney Center, and, and then our, our meeting will be that Thursday, November 6th at 4.30. Meeting scheduled for uh, Thursday, November 20th at 4.30. We've got a uh, meeting scheduled for December 4th at 4.30, and December 18th at 4.30. So those are the uh, tentative meeting dates. Uh, they look good to you. We'll lock them in. That takes us right through the end of the year. Okay. Everything looks good to me. Look good so far. Excellent. Lock those in. Can I see this? Are you yeah. I just want to lock it. Sure. Anything else for action items? Using technology. I know. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Somebody get a picture of that. Thank. <laughs> Zoom in. Uh, next up, public comments. Agenda item number three. Any public comments in the audience at this point? Yes. Are we going to discuss Prospect Farm? Uh, it is on the agenda under old business only because uh, we were under the impression that the Conservation Committee uh, Commission chairperson had taken it up at his meeting. And we were thinking that there was going to be something coming to us, and that's the only reason it was on the agenda. It's not something that we were really intending to discuss. So, and in, until they come to us with something, we really have nothing to discuss. So, why don't we just discuss away right here and now? Okay. Have you uh, at least read the proposed uh, Warren article? I guess it would be. No. Article. No, we were expecting it to come to us um, to review. Have you seen? Have you seen a proposed warrant? Oh, yes, I, I think there's a number of people here all with the same concerns. Anybody got a copy of it? We have lots of copies. Okay. And I know Larry's going to be here, but he couldn't be here until after 5, so I don't know. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. You want to sorry. read it into record? or? I'm sorry that you as selectmen are out of the loop. <laughs> so many of us actually are concerned about this because I don't know how it goes as a proposal if it comes from the uh, Conservation Commission. <clears throat> you have to vote amongst yourselves whether you recommend it or not, or does it still need signatures to get on as a warrant? Part of it? Um, well, as far as I know, it would be placed on by us, by the, by the selectmen. By the board. Then we probably have this opportunity to discuss it a little bit because it becomes uh, restrictive on the use of Prospect Farm by the residents of Jackson. It seems to want to uh, cut out hunting, campfires, camping. Um, I don't remember all that issues, but it, it becomes restrictive, and I, I really find that hard, uh, hard to take because, you know, it's not a problem now. I don't think we have a problem up there. We don't have obvious uh, recreational vehicles. It's not getting torn up by uh, motorcycles or ATVs. It's only open to residents. <coughs> I don't know what we're trying to fix if it's not a problem. Hunting, I mean, I understand that people don't uh, approve of hunting, and I suggest them they not hunt. There's a number of other people that enjoy hunting as a good outdoor experience, and I don't think we should restrict what type of recreation that land is used for. I 
Hi, I'm Henry Mark. Could we have that statement read into the public record today? And could you read it out loud? I, I've never seen it. Prospect Farm Ordinance to see if the town will vote to regulate and protect Prospect Farm by banning all motorized vehicle use except for maintenance, forestry, emergency, or to comply with federal ADA laws. Further to ban open fires, hunting, and camping unless for educational purposes with written permission of the selectmen. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to ha have any comments on Prospect Farm <coughs> while we're on the uh, topic? Well, I, I think I would. I, I, definitely, I definitely object to this hunting business, of trying to stop hunting on 500 acres of wild land. And um, it can't be posted, it's got to be posted all the way around it, every 100 yards. Now, who is going to do that every year? And more particularly, who's going to pay for all that posting paper? Every 100 yards all the way around that piece of property is the only way it can be done legally. So um, I think there's a cost here coming to the taxpayers to just post it, if nothing else. And who's going to police it? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be sending our police officers up there on their ATVs, which I don't know if they have or not, but uh, someone's got to enforce it. Yeah. I just don't buy into this. It's um, leave it alone. It's fine. They've got lumber up there. The town's got money from lumber, I think, through the years, it seems. And um, I am definitely opposed to it. And we'll do what I can to work against passage of this proposal. Thank you. Um, hey. Correct the hunters in the room, correct me if I'm wrong, but even if it was posted, it's I feel as though it would give a false sense of sense of security to anybody going up there and thinking, oh, I can walk here, I'm safe, I don't need to wear hunter orange, I don't need to take standard precautions of walking in the woods in the fall, um, because it is surrounded by lands that on which hunting is allowed. So I don't think anybody could necessarily you, know, you go up there dressed like a deer in the hunting season, you're not gonna be safe. I just want to say, you know, with the, you know I, I went through the uh, process of the, uh, um, what do they call the, the, the document that, for the future planning of the town, what is it, the, it's not a plan. Master plan. The what? Master plan. And uh, it was it was probably, I think, back in the early 90s, and there was, the words were used, you know, tradition, keeping the nature of the town, and, you know, not, you know, you know, kind of maintaining that sense of what the town of Jackson was and is, you know, today at the time. And, um, you know, when you start adopting policies that are exclusionary to certain groups of people in the town, it, it smells of a sort of a, you know, an elitist attitude towards of some people's activities are fair and good, and other people are just, you know, <coughs> um, anachronisms. But you know, part of the tradition in the town was back to when, you know, I think we had this discussion, um, I, I don't know, I can't remember, when Peter Kelly was a selectman, and, and we talked about Prospect Farm and, um, you know, the perpetuity of, of, of um, what the traditional uses were for that, for that property. And um, it was, I think it was um, written down somewhere, or at least it was noted in at the time, I'm sure somebody kept, they kept minutes, and um, it just seems like a, a proposal that goes against the grain of, of anything that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people here, well, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but there's people here, and there's also people that aren't here, you know, uh, you look at the Camp Gallup, and, you know, how long has that been up there, and, you know, Cobby Kelly, and the Kellys, and the, and the McDonald's, and, you know, all these other people that, have, you know, use that camp at Thanksgiving, they come up there three or four days, they hunt out of the camp, um, and then, you know, they go away for most of the most part. Somebody up, comes up and checks on them. But, you know, what would happen to them? Would they even have access? Would they even be able to get through? Could they carry a firearm onto the property you know, through to get to National Forest land? I mean, it, it, it would create all kinds of difficulties. And that's just talking about one thing, you know, the hunting part. Um, 
I don't know how often I've ever asked to get a key to go up through that gate. It's been probably be counted on one hand. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not something I think a lot of people do, but, you know, just the opportunity to be able to do so, I think it gives a sense of, uh, of, of just having an opportunity to go to go onto some property that's, that's uh, you know, it's been used that way, you know, traditionally. And um, the other question I have is when we're talking about the hunting park, you know, in the conflicts with ski touring and, you know, other things, um, ski touring may do work on the trails, but I mean, this, this trails that are on that, of course, time as well. And um, when there are actually people skiing up there, um, deer season is over. And uh, maybe people, maybe somebody will come go up there with some rabbit dogs and hunt some, you know, rabbit, but usually, you know, you, you hear the people, but you know, you're not gonna, you know, it's, it's, it's not generally a conflict issue, but I think what, what this proposal is, is going to do is going to make it a conflict issue because people are going to be not happy about it. I mean, certainly, you know, to, if, if they do go ahead and prove it and pass it, but that, that's a long way from that, but that's just, you know, my feelings about it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Dean? Yeah, ski turn, probably on the groom, I think I'd go to snowshoes. If there's no motorized things up there, I mean, they shouldn't be exempt. They go with snowshoes, right? Yeah. They have you know, no motorized vehicles. Okay. Um, I think this day and age with um, the sedentary lifestyle, of the general population, it's more important than ever to get kids and families outdoors. Um, you know, between AMC and Tin Mountain, um, it's both of their missions to to do so. And I think maybe we should make it less restrictive and make it possible so more people can get up there and enjoy it. And maybe even do a hardened campsite. Um, it's a super easy place to get to. It gives kids a sense of adventure and. and you know, big adventure going up and camping. It's really the ideal site for, for, for a first time camping experience. And maybe we could make that, a, you know, resident only uh, as an opportunity place for people to go out and go camping. Anybody else? Nancy? Um, I guess I'm, I'm Super concerned about this. I, I just I don't see that we need to tell our residents how they can recreate. I think the the historical and traditional and recognized usage of that property speaks for itself um, over many many years. And I think it would be a shame because, like like Penny said, between Fish and Game you going to their website and they're promoting getting outdoors, getting kids outdoors, getting everyone of all ages and all abilities outdoors at any level and amc does the same thing and tin mine and tin mountain in their own way and i just think it's kind of sad to to put a restriction like this when and take such a uh, draconian measure when i i guess i haven't heard any um reason that warrants this you know we haven't had any fatalities up there we haven't had any you know, you know, I just, I don't understand what prompts this to take such a drastic measure and to take away a resource from our residents. Hmm. Can I ask a question? Is yeah. there anybody here who wrote this memo here at this meeting that can take the other side or? Well, we're, we're waiting for Larry to guess. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is. Oh. Somebody's got their you know, Okay, no, I The reason we're all, I think, licensed are all, but I mean, I don't okay. No, it's say all. It's, it's pretty big group. Sure. You know, it, 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 right. it's exclusionary. And, right. You know, I'm not saying that you know we're going to all of a sudden we're going to come forward and put forward a proposal that we're not going to allow people to go over and you know do walk around. I right. Mean, it's it's like a it's, it's kind yeah. of a logic that I don't really follow. Well, I think I'm hoping that it's it's probably pretty apparent that since we didn't even know this memo existed, that we hadn't read it. And, and which means we haven't even had an opportunity to discuss it. And I'll just briefly, and we, we try and stay away from big items in public comment sessions, but since you're all here for this, you know, we can probably spend a little bit of time on it. It's not the, it's not the heaviest agenda we've, we've had in a while. The whole thing 
the whole prospect farm issue came about, I don't know, a couple of months ago. Somebody came in and asked for the key to go up there. It was a second homeowner in Jackson, and it was their impression that residents could access the key and go up there. And so um, I don't know if we gave them the key or they were going to come back the next day and never did or whatever, but it just prompted, uh, why don't we have a sign-up sheet? for that key so people are signing it out and we know where it is rather than just hand somebody the key. I mean, there should be some sort of protocol in place and that's how the whole prospect farm issue came about. And then it was like, well, and, and what are we giving them the key to do? Is there any direction anywhere? And nobody could find anything. And then B said, well, actually in the two, 1972 town report, <laughs> there's a record of a conservation committee that was headed by Peter Kelly that went through a number of these items and, and did an item by item vote on what to recommend for the town. And that's actually why we're trying to access town annual meeting minutes from 1972 because they're not in the town office. The town report talks about this recommendation made to the voters, but we can't verify whether the voters actually voted on this. We're, we're under the impression they did, but we'd like to see the minutes to ensure that. And it's like, this, they, they recommended what, no, no overnight camping. They recommended this, they recommended that, they recommended snowmobile trails could be cut. The conservation committee that was headed by Peter Kelly in 1972, we went all the way back, that's in the town report, but we don't know if voters actually voted in the town meeting, because we're not, we're not looking to be, we're, we're not looking to make any changes to anything that went up there, but it was a fair question. It's like, well, what are people allowed to do up there? Because there's a prospect farm file in here that talks about how uh, this was deeded to the land simply to be allowed for Jackson residents recreational use. And does it need to be, do, do, do we need a, a sign out sheet for a key? Do we need an ordinance? Do we need nothing? Um, you know, I think that, I don't think anybody's come in and asked for the key before that gentleman came in a couple months ago and probably a year or two, or maybe even as long as I've been in selectman here. So we're just trying to get to the bottom of what, what has been the will of the voters up to this point. And we haven't discussed the merits of the vote taken in 1972 or whether it makes sense or whether it should be revisited or whether it should be left alone or what should be done up there. We had... Jackson Ski Touring Foundation up here, and they talked a little bit about what they do up in the Prospect Farm area. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we haven't put together uh, an agenda item to really take a look at this or anything like that. I don't think any of us are feeling like we would do something like that without having a, a, a nice full-blown you know, public forum session with the whole thing so we could hear these views, all views that are out there that exist, but nobody's taking draconian measures and trying to limit use that's already uh, permitted. Oh, well, no, when you say nobody, you mean... Nobody up here on the board. Right. No, no, I just, yeah. I just to sure. Right. Yeah, no, we, we haven't discussed any of that. Like, you know, the uses up there, are they... Is, is what people voted on in 1972 even enforceable? Because it didn't translate into a use ordinance in the past. So we, we don't have any of those answers yet. So, But we would certainly, I, I, I mean, I don't speak for Bill or John, but I don't think we have any intention of, of putting together an ordinance that, that well, hasn't been vetted through the public. The way, it, I mean, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I understand it is, it, is somebody proposes something and then to, to the board select, the select and discuss, they have a, you know, amongst themselves, and they make a determination as well, they're going to support the ordinance or a warrant article or whatever that may be. Right. So, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm sure that would come back, but, you know, it just yeah. it would be a, you know, yes. it's just one of those things that if it, you know, obviously, you know, like you're caught on the nerve and uh, yeah. was, I'm sure there's more people that just want to feel that way. But, like a citizen's just, group yeah. could propose an ordinance get enough signatures so that it's on the town warrant ballot and then, you know, the selectmen will vote 
in favor of, not in favor of, that. So any any citizens group can put an ordinance uh, on the town warrant. You guys could put an ordinance on that doesn't yeah. allow for any restrictions up there if you want to, and you get I don't know, fifteen or twenty five signatures. It's not a lot. Here looking to change anything. I'm, I'm no. speaking yeah. myself. But just you know, they don't want to see something yeah. change that's going to affect those. Particular uses, you're seeing a lot of particular users of that of that property. But if that conservation committee in 1972 <coughs> recommended no overnight camping, right. and the voters in 1972 voted to support that restriction, what do we do? You're, you're saying you don't want to see anything change. Well, I mean, I'm just saying there's there's yeah you know, the change that that is most. Um, you know, I think caught the attention was the no motorized vehicles and the no hunting. Yeah. I mean, in my understanding is conservation land; it's not a preserve. And you know that that is sort of the yeah. traditional yeah. uses have been have been traditional. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah, we're see, we're still in the whole fact finding fine. phase on this, but yeah, I mean that's kind of where we're at with it. I mean, this got thrown in our lap. We're trying to do due right. diligence to to what 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 the voters expressed in '72 is. As far as I know, maybe none of it makes sense, and we don't support any of it, and we want to get input from from the town on that. So, but we're a long way away from figuring that out. B. This is not uh, conservation. What's that? Prospect Fund is not conservation. Land. It isn't conservation. Right. Uh huh. Yep. Deeded to the town. Um, anybody else? Bill, John, you guys have anything? I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm, I have no position particularly about this. I would support the town how, how they want to do it, but I have no personal position about it at all. Randy? Yeah, or, what is a ski tour and paint use this property anyway? What the ski Jackson ski tour and pay? Do, you, do they pay to use this property as town property? Are they making a buck on it? We're not. They don't pay the town to use town land for ski well, tour. Well, yeah. we should help them go up there and ski for nothing. I don't care if they run or not. Yeah. It's not their property. So. Yeah. Well, that came up too, and and the only thing we found was a 2004 document signed, you know, by by D that allowed Jackson ski touring to use town land for their trails in exchange for a discounted pass for uh, residents. That's the only, and we, so when that came up, we looked into that and that's all we found. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think, you know, the bottom line is some of this stuff needs to be a little bit more formalized so that, you know, it's clear yeah. and, and, and we're working on that. And, and this is, I guess, part of the process too. So it may be that all we do about this is adopt a key use policy. I think they need more than one key. Yeah. Well, yeah, now we're probably going to have everybody want to key. <laughs> now that it's up there. But yeah, you're probably well, right about one, that. You need one that works, too. I was up there the other day. I just oh, heard you when, you when you came in. So, so yeah. I got out there. Well, I, Improvise. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bet you did. Um, so no, and, and so the input's all all valuable. There's no question about it. But yeah. you know, it's nothing that I have on any kind of a okay. timeline to deal with, and, and, and until we, I mean, this would certainly qualify for its own mm -hmm. public forum informational night in my mind. I mean, yeah. no question about it. If it ever got to that point, but. So, you know, whether you want to feel like the will of the voters in 72 carries weight today, there's things that exist. And, and you know, how responsible would we be to just kind of like pretend that they hadn't weighed in on it? If they have. And we still don't have the town minutes yet. But that, that's, so that's where we're at with it. Larry? I guess you're talking about prospect at this point. Yeah. Sorry, I can't really. Um, this is a personal note, not as chairman of the Conservation Commission, uh, and I, I agree with what Rick was saying, where Jackson Ski Tour is not a taxpayer, we're granting them something there that nobody else has. And I just think that, that you know, they came in and they spoke to the parking and to their costs, but those are costs they're gonna have regardless, uh, whether they charge people or not. 
And, and as a taxpayer, I don't think I should have to pay to use land I pay taxes on. And, and they're trying to charge taxpayers to use that. And so, so I, I have a problem with that. And, and our board, uh, the Conservation Commission, uh, we kind of talked vaguely about bringing that up at the next meeting. Uh, we, we decided to move the ordinance on to, to, to you guys, and we were hoping that you would push that forward as much as public comment tonight here might be against it. Uh, but regardless of whether or not you do that, I think we're going to go get 25 signatures, and we decided on that ourselves, if you don't decide to move this forward and see if we can't get some rules and regulations up there that are for today, not 35 years ago, 40 years ago. Mm. And, and you know, we we're pretty adamant on, you know, the camping and the fires that you can have, and hunting, all three of those, you can do that 100 yards in any direction of Prospect Farm. Uh, off-road biking or, or off-road vehicles, you can't do that on forest service, period. You know, not here, not in Jackson. And, you know, that, that the only other thing was, you know, you can hunt, you can camp, and you can have fires <coughs> 100 yards in any direction. So I think the, the, the Conservation Commission is pretty adamant on, you know, they feel that there need to be rules and regulations, and there are none now that seem to be in place. I mean, I, you know, in the last few weeks we've seen coyote hunter, bird hunters, dog walkers. Just, I'm not sure if town property should have hunting and children in the you know, same 500 acres. But that's, that's kind of where... But we'll continue to. Uh, excuse me. We'll we'll continue to go ahead and allow. I will continue to go ahead and allow public comment time for anybody to express what they want within reason. But I would like to do it by having a show of hands and for you to be recognized rather than lots of back and forth stuff. We do have rules of order here for the meeting, and so I would ask you to please share anything that's on your mind, but let's do it in an orderly fashion. Who <coughs> next? Is everybody done? Nancy. I'm, I'm just a little curious. This seems like a, a ready, fire, aim situation because I, I don't understand why we go from having an inability to access a key to writing a law and imposing rules and regulations and guidelines. I'm not sure if our police department has been um, asked about how that might be enforced. I, I mean, it just seems like such an extreme response when we haven't had any incidences up there. And why do we want to discourage families from going camping? I mean, I mean, I can see fireworks. That doesn't sound like a grand idea to me, but why would you stifle families going camping? I don't understand this. And I don't understand why you don't request public comment before you propose an ordinance. Why, you know, you go ahead and write something without finding out, you know, just asking folks what they might be thinking and feeling. Larry. Yeah, well, camping is a real problem because of sanitation. And, and, and it's 500 acres. And you just, you, as soon as you put, have camping, you need to have facilities on a, on a piece of land like that. Uh, it's just, you can't have people spending nights out and not having facilities. It's not sanitary. It's just, it's, you have to have camp sites. They're, they're, and, 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 and the police department has been asked about that. And, and you know, that's the last thing that the chief wanted was people in the back of town where he doesn't know where they are or, you know, or, you know, if, if there is a fire. So, I, I, there are, you know, there are some, to, and it's not overnight, yes, and, I, and I'm sorry if you feel that way. Uh, to bring anything up, you have to have public conversation. So as soon as you can't, <clears throat> if there are no, no rules and regulations right now uh, that we know of, and there aren't set, someone needs to set some. You can't just have it a, it's not just a free fall of 500 acres where anyone can go up there and do whatever they want. So there has to be some guidelines or rules or regulations. And if the last time they were done was 1980, 
well, perhaps it needs to be relooked at. And the conversation is an important conversation. And the more people that come out, the better. And we might find, like I've said all along, if we found 50, 60 people on a snowmobile, well, maybe the Conservation Commission needs to look at snowmobile trips. And if 100 people want to camp, well, maybe we need to look at bathrooms or facilities so that they could, you know, you know, use the area. So that's all part of the conversation. So whatever comes of it is fine, but someone has to propose something in order to get the conversation going. And that's why the ordinance was proposed by the Conservation Commission. Just the same simple rules as Whitaker Woods. You know, so, and that was the only thing. We put it out there. If people don't like it, that's great, fine. But let's you know, keep it the way it is. But I, not to have any conversation or to have any rules and regulations that everyone knows about, well, no, we've got to solve that. Uh, OK, so another part of the rules of order, Robert's rules of order, there's a suggestion that you know people limit their ability to weigh into this thing to, to two times. That's just a suggestion. It's not a requirement. but. I'm going to allow, I'm going to ask for uh, input from hands that haven't gone up up to this point. Go ahead. Yeah, um, Gary Floyd. Uh, I, I find uh, the, some of the discussion interesting is that from 1972, there hasn't been an issue. Uh, and nobody seems to know what happened in 1972, but whatever happened is not an issue, it seems. Uh, and to make rules for the purpose of making rules is. I would think are necessary. The, um, the land up there, not just the Prospect Farm, but the, you know, the uh, National Forest, is, it's just a unique asset um, for Jackson. And, and I think we want to encourage use um, reasonably. There, there seems to be a very low uh, footprint now, a very low usage. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't see where there's any abuse of that. Um, and, uh, and I've seen people um, hunting for antlers and they had the key, they got in. <coughs> yeah, so be it, you know, why not? Uh, no damage was done. Um, we just formed a uh, Boy Scout troop here in Jackson, you know, seven, eight, ten year olds. Uh, and um, we had the unfortunate experience of going down camping. Um, at the Boy Scout Center um, near Manchester, uh, which was camping beside the highway, and even the trucks up. And we, we were discussing uh, on that evening, well, you know, we just need to take the kids up uh, Prospect Farm and, and up in, in that area, uh, just do some hiking and, and doing some real stuff and not made up stuff uh, in terms of being outdoors and camping and that. And, uh, and, I can't imagine we're going to have weekends, uh, you know, one after another up there. But it would be nice to be able to go out and camp out overnight. What you take in, you take out, and uh, I don't see any problem with that. I don't know if it has been a problem, but I haven't seen it. More hands, Dean. Yeah, Skidoo's was voted in in '91. Larry said there was no regulations. That was a town vote. It's okay, I'm up there. Saying, uh, I'm just not aware of it. So. Writing it down on the board. Got it right here, actually. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, big, it's bird season. They've seen one bird on it. Oh my God. In a coyote hunt? Huh? Yeah. 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 Well, one last time around, I said five minutes, uh, about five minutes ago, but I don't want anybody to feel like uh, they've got something to say and it hasn't been able to be entered into the record. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, there's, there's, I did bring a letter from my son that he wrote regarding Prospect Farm, but the kids are the future of Jackson, and I can name four kids right off that are working to get their hunter safety license to be able to go hunt. And, particularly interested in deer and bird hunting. And again, it's an easily accessible, yes, they can do it on the National Forest as well, but this is town land. It's an easily accessible place. Um, it's excellent have wildlife habitat. Um, the orchards are being maintained for wildlife habitat up there to, to increase wildlife. Um, so 
you know, the kids, the kids are interested, the kids see it as a resource, and they also have voiced their opinion that they would like it accessible to hunting. Um, also, my son got a dirt bike um, two years ago, and we've been up there dirt biking along with the Chapmans. Um, so there are a, in just a few kids in town who a couple times a summer go up there and, and dirt bike. Sorry, wait one okay. but this one, one quick note. Uh, this ordinance did allow for the Boy Scouts, I believe. It does allow for educational groups to use the But the, the why was it to them? Well, I, I'm just saying that's what it to be. You have to have a badge that to be, uh, you know, uh, someone who looks at you. Show of hands, anyone else want to weigh in on this, Dick? Oh, I was just going to wait to the end and say thank you for uh, getting the public dialogue moving and I'm glad that the selectmen now have the proposal in front of them to uh, consider because it's obviously going to become an issue for the town. So right. I'm pleased that it's being dealt with. Well, we haven't had a chance to discuss it, but I think no, we're but planning on start. probably meeting about three, four times a week until this whole thing is settled. So. We'll be back every night. <laughs> Nancy? I'm just curious what the time frame is and what the process is and how it will involve the public for you to come to your decision. What I are understand the conservation's mission and yeah. they'll do the 25 signatures no matter what, but I'm mm -hmm. just curious about the selectmen's, how you will proceed and how the public will be involved and what your time frame is. I haven't had a chance to really put a plan together. It's, like I said, this is the first time we've seen of it. Do you guys have any thoughts uh, off the top of your head you want to express? It sounds pretty clear that uh, the Conservation Commission plans on putting a warrant article out. And so, barring some other turn of events, I mean, we'll have an opportunity to, to weigh in on whether we support the, uh, the ordinance or not. <clears throat> I'm, um, I, I don't have any heated position on this thing at all, but if, if they put together the warrant article, they, you all have a chance to put out another warrant article, I guess, but I don't, I mean, my opinion is not speaking for them, but I don't think we would necessarily have personal positions that, you know, whatever the town decides, I think, would be what I would, you know, wherever the town wants to go with this is where I'd go with it. There, there's no clear solution that says this is the best one I think we'll ever get there. The question is, you know, I guess you could put it on a war article and vote it down. So anything's possible. John? I don't say that. You can vote it down or up. That's what okay. it goes down to. So I, I, I would say that you know, one of the reasons we try and kind of avoid, you know, Getting into to, to long matters and meetings when I'm when we you know we had had this had a chance to digest it I think it's it should definitely be on the agenda at our next meeting, and at that point we'll have had an opportunity to consider it and as well consider everything we've heard here today, and come back hopefully have some semblance of an intelligent discussion on on the issue and and maybe some thoughts about. Um, a way forward um, with this. So that, that I don't know how you guys feel about that. Does that make sense? Sounds good to me. Uh, one more hand. You, one more go around here. I don't want anybody to feel like they're being stifled. Your hand went up. Um, with this, when a warrant article go, gets is up for to be voted on, the selectmen support. Don't they put a, a yes? We're going to support this, or no? We're not going. To we take a formal it. vote. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, yay, nay, or abstain. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? Police report. Next up is uh, agenda item number four: police report. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Would the ATVs have lights and sirens? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, obviously, it's been it's quieted down now. We've had one pistol permit issue 
uh, two motor vehicle complaints, one theft at a local establishment, four motor vehicle accidents, one bear complaint, uh, missing cat complaint on uh, Nancy Davis's cat, still missing, a tabby with white paws. If you've seen it, uh, give her a call. Uh, tree down, which brought wires down, one report of that. One missing dog report. It's a black, tan, and white on its face and answers to the name of Cheddar. One domestic disturbance at a local establishment. Three false burglary alarms and one disorderly subject. And that's all there is to report. Okay. Are you questions for Sean? Sure. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Okay. <coughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Agenda item five uh, building inspectors report. You gave us an update on where Kevin is. Yes, this is just their weekly. Stuff. Right. Uh, building inspectors report that was submitted. Good afternoon, all. Oh, here we are in October already. New construction continues unabated. Thanks again, everybody. What's that? The whole audience. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now we're lonely again. <laughs> Uh, new construction continues unabated. Kevin and I continue to make progress as Kevin refines his position. I've been concentrating on the renewed effort to complete the Wentworth Hotel project now that the general contractor has been given the okay to continue construction and repair the fire damage. This is good news as we all hope to get a certificate of occupancy by Christmas. Still much detail work to complete. Kevin is assuming more of the lead on new residential work, of which he has had plenty to look at. Next week, I'll be doing more fire safety education as Fire Prevention Week is October 5th through the 11th. We will be going to the Jackson School for a, a demonstration, and I'll be meeting with the new librarian, like in Rancourt, to discuss fire safety and her role in keeping her building safe. Thank you all. Uh, see you next week. Bob Goodrow. And the report for this week was, thanks for an interesting week. Too busy to list all the inspections and fire prevention education. And don't forget to test your smoke detectors. And we've got building permits. So I just read through these briefly. Yes, FYI's uh, map V10. Lot 16, owner is Driscoll, and that is 31 Alpine Drive uh, for electrical updates and outlet installations. Map V9, lot 18, uh, owner is Benoit, 17 Thornhill Road, and uh, building a 10 by 23 season porch. Map R18, lot 66. Owner is Roundy, 616 Carter Notch Road, building an 11 by 12 foot roof cover for a deck. And we have one uh, driveway permit signed off, and that is for Russell and Dorothy Siebold. Map V7, lot 129. Uh, I have a letter signed off by the fire inspector, Mr. Goudreau, uh, regarding, uh, to Ms. Bellin, regarding the oil spill. That's uh, an FYI, are you aware of that? Or? No, no, no. Okay, you want me to, it's fairly short, should I read that into the record, or what would you like to do? Probably. Okay. Dear Ms. Bellin, fire department response, this letter is to formally notify you and confirm our phone <coughs> conversation in regards to the spill of number two fuel oil that occurred on your property, located at 234 Route 16 here in the town of Jackson. In close, please find an official copy of our incident report indicating what this department found upon our arrival and what was done to mitigate the spill. The Department of Environmental Services has been notified. It is your responsibility to properly dispose of this hazardous waste in accordance with New Hampshire state law. If you have any questions about the incident, please do not hesitate to contact this department. 
So apparently there was a heating oil spill up there. I know that. Anything else either one of you have for the building inspector? Negative. <coughs> Agenda item six, new business. First up, 6A, uh, Department of Transportation Biennial Inspection of Bridges found, and we got this <coughs> here, arrived in our office on October 8th, uh, and it, it found one issue with our bridge. It is the Dundee Road bridge over Mill Brook. Uh, the south weight posting sign was twisted and facing the wrong way, and that is the only repair that they noted and apparently Jay's been notified, and is that something he, he's going to do, or they're going to come back and do? Or? You know, I'm not sure. I just made, made sure he was aware of it. Okay. Because. Great. I have the order to sign and everything. I'm right. Can we get an action item on that? Sure. Just uh, maybe make sure that's done. somebody at the office, uh, check with Jay, find out uh, who's, who's planning on doing that. He probably knows whether they'll be back or not. 6B, warrant for the general election. Signatures required on this one. And they basically just sent a sample of the warrant that must be posted at all polling places. Uh, no later than Tuesday, October 21st for the general election. So this is an automatic. I don't think we need to entertain a motion to sign this, do we? This is protocol. Or should we entertain a motion to sign the warrant for the election scheduled for November 4th, 2014? Shall we get motion? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Very good. <coughs> Uh, right there. Three. Good question. We signed both places? Um, I don't know. This is Karen's. Oh, okay. We're the selectmen, so it does have both boxes. Why don't you go ahead and sign them both? I'm not going to get too mad at us. For Oh, there he is there. Next up under new business, agenda item six D. Oh no, 6C, letter from Ann Peterson, resident town of Jackson, sent a letter here, was received on October 6th, and uh, the letter starts by saying, please read the following into the minutes. So it's the first time I've seen the letter. I'm wondering whose white van is parked in the public parking lot near the fire station pretty consistently year round. It obviously must belong to a resident. Does this mean that any resident can park extra vehicles in the town parking lots for any length of time? I'd be interested in doing this as my dooryard is overflowing with trucks, cars, and hanging equipment. Is there a limit to how many vehicles belonging to one resident can be parked in the town lots? And for how long, please advise. Then I'll solve the problem. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, and I, I was told this letter came in. I hadn't seen it, but I, I also asked Julie to kind of run this by Sean. That there is no ordinance that we're no, but, but also, aware also. of. So. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, we've got a uh, supplemental intent to cut. And let's see here. This is for. This is for. Map the, MR30. The I think that they, they're cutting more than they expected to cut, I think is what um, No. On the, on the paper clip part. <coughs> 
Uh, good morning. Is it possible to put this before the selectmen tomorrow for their signature? It's from Ann Bennett. Um, first email. Uh, next page. Yeah, there you go. Hi there. This one's from Ann Bennett. I have a second intent to cut form for the harvest of the property at 27 Cross Road owned by Horn, McGrath, Foster, Curran. Uh, given that there may, addition, may be additional yield before the end of the cut, I'm hoping that if I get it to you tomorrow, it might come before the selectman for a signature on Thursday. Thank you for your help. Uh, very good. So that is the uh, email connected with the intent to cut. Any questions? Any motions? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Down at the bottom there on those. Sixteen. Anything to add to the intent to cut there, Mr. No, and they just harvested, uh, it turned out to be a better harvest than they originally thought, so they're putting in, it's actually a benefit to the town because it's more yield tax that right. they have, so. And, and they're all done. Oh. So this should be it. Okay, <clears throat> great. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have a uh, letter of commitment for hazardous waste day uh, where we hereby commit to participate and cooperate with the town of Conway in a household hazardous waste day. We do it every year and this is uh, going to be held on uh, September 12th, 2015. Giving us plenty of notice for that. Um, and uh, we grant the uh, community hereby grants the town of Conway the authority to represent the community in organizing the collection project. Town of Jackson has appropriated blank amount of dollars for the purpose of allowing all residents of the community access to the household hazardous waste collection project. Uh, they're looking for this letter back by December 15th. We supposed to put a, a dollar amount in there? I can use what we had last year and I can't remember what that was off the top of my head. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess we could probably um, entertain a motion to contribute at that some amount relative to what we did last year, if either one of you want to make it. Uh, I know there are people that like to take advantage of that, that have hazardous waste. How do you guys feel about it? I went to it. I was great. I it was nice to see the, the turnout. Yeah. And I would make a motion to pay the same thing we paid last year. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll just have you fill in that same dollar amount that was that's on the record. For the one thing year. I can think of is that you know how much did we actually use of that money last year because they do you know prorate it for each town you know specifically. So I don't know how many Jacks Knights showed up. Um, but yeah, I thought there was more to the letter than that. But uh, what I'll I'll look into it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> just one spot for a signature here for an authorized agent. It must be it. An agent? I'm an agent? You're an agent. <laughs> I'll uh, go ahead then and uh, sign this since we've made the motion and passed. Did we vote, Martin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. Glad you're here. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then we got the MS1 report in today. You want to give a quick update on this and uh, what it represents? Well, Jason, Jason finished the uh, entering all the data for their revaluation um, over the weekend. So we got the MS1 submitted on Monday. I got the MS1 submitted Monday <coughs> morning. And now that puts us in the queue. Um, so that we, to the, with the DRA, so that will put us in the queue, and as soon as our, we're up, then they will submit the preliminary tax rate to us. <coughs> so obviously it's a different year with different <coughs> property valuations, so, so things will change somewhat. Um, and then in addition to that, we uh, have also been 
obviously discussing, not heavily, but throughout the last couple of months, the whole unreserved fund balance issue. Uh, we heard about that the night of the town meeting, annual meeting, and, and all of those warrant articles that the voters approved and how that was going to impact the tax rate. And now is the time to kind of address that on this. <coughs> And they'll give us so advice to when yeah. the preliminary tax rate comes back, which should be hopefully within the next week or so, then at that point you guys have to uh, decide what percentage of the unreserved fund balance to you use, use. Um, to, offset. To, uh, yeah, to offset the taxes. And um, at that point we give that information back to the Department of Revenue and then they give us the tax rate. Mm -hmm. And then we can send out the billing for December. And we'd like that sooner rather than later, obviously. Um, I, I think we would have wanted this back a lot sooner if it hadn't been for the fact that the whole town went through a, a property reval. We would have had it by now. But um, Tammy, who's with the Crane and Bell, Crane and Bell <coughs> we've been with on this, um, has been addressing this and, and uh, you know she has recommended that we stay within a, a 10 to 12 percent range on that unreserved fund balance which we were targeting all along for using to offset a lot of those one-time warrant articles and <coughs> she was just on the phone at four o'clock I know this is preliminary but um, we, it, based on this current year's valuation, if we were to bring that down to the middle road of her recommendation, say an 11% level, um, our tax rate would be, the town tax rate would be about, five, what was it, seven cents lower than last year. And there are, are some other variables that will come out. Sure. Yes. Right. And right, once that reval goes in, that'll be different. But based on that, that's what No, those are using the, the, the reval, reval numbers. Reval oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yes. catch that on yes. the phone call. Yes. So. Because I gave it MS1 yeah. too. So I wanted to kind of throw that out there and to have that start a discussion that probably should at least begin tonight, see how you guys feel about that. Um, is, is that something that seems reasonable to you guys? How do, where, where do you guys weigh in on that? That seems, I mean, we'll have to see what the numbers are, obviously, and then, you know, you know I think that's, that's where I want, I was hoping it would go, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. keep the tax rate as level as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with John, I'm comfortable knowing all about this. Yeah, right. Yes. Uh, so if this is on the agenda for next, for two weeks from tonight, is that, that's, that's too that's late. That's too late. We need to, what the suggestion was is that Tammy could be um, in an email string with all of us and we could work out the numbers and the variables, but we want to do this as soon as we get that preliminary rate from the Department of Revenue, because November 6th is going to be way too late. So we would have to have a special meeting to do that. You have to do it. Well, no, apparently, not if it's via email. If you guys aren't meeting, you, it can be done. That's what I've been told. Well, I think it, it, we would still want us, that entire communication chain to be public, uh, pu public record. And so if we have that kind of a discussion around this through emails, I think it would be smart to, to bring those in and pass those to Martha. So if we're going to have a discussion around this, there sh it should be done. Okay, so in a reply so my all. So we just bring the emails in for November sixth meeting to submit. To However, updates. the decision will be made at that point because you update it then. Right. Oh, when you say update. Well, I mean, give the final decision. Oh, well, the final decision. Okay, sure. So how does that work? Does that fit in sure. with your timeline? Well, as part needs. Yeah, as long as, I mean, as long as you guys feel, are able to make the decision as soon as we get the, um, the spreadsheet from the department program. Okay. And so, are, we're, we're looking to sign the MS-1 tonight, right? Yes. 
and we can do that without really addressing that unreserved fund exactly. balance. We separate, can continue fund, yeah. to do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so is everybody comfortable with where we're at with that? Based on this here. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to sign the MS one. Second. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. So I think we've all got the base knowledge we need now that once we get those numbers, be able to take a look at those amounts and see where we're at with it. I also just kind of mentioned to Julie, I don't know if I really, how, I, how strongly I felt about it, but um, I think we ended up, I don't know, Warrant article happy is the right way to describe what happened last year, but there were a lot of one-time warrant articles out there, and I'd like to get your thoughts around, you know, coming into these warrant articles with maybe some sort of, uh, not a hard and fast commitment, but a realization that it might be us to have some sort of a idea of a cap amount of all the Warren articles that we want to look at so that we don't end up off in a list of Warren articles that go really above and beyond because we're not going to be able to take money out of that unreserved fund balance in perpetuity like we are this year. It makes a lot of sense this year because those were kind of one time expenditures but um, and that's one of the reasons that the fiscal committees you know looking at how we finance equipment and things like that but just want to just just want that tax rate <clears throat> including the warrant articles to be as responsible as we can make them still want to make sure that the town's needs are met but and just how do you how do we control that if somebody wants to make a warrant article what do we do when you say I don't know. Yeah. Well, again, if, if there's a, a warrant article that's that's put on the town warrant uh, with citizen signatures, we can vote to support it or not to support it. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, somebody, we could all vote not to support a warrant article. We could. But and the town could vote it in anyway, but right. at least at that point, we would be able to stand up and oh, say, this might okay. be a great idea, but... We just didn't think now was the time because we've right. already got plenty of warrant articles out there that kind of. I've had several inputs from people saying that they would like to hear more discussion from the selectmen on warrant articles. I don't know whether you want to face that or not, but <coughs> whatever that is, yeah. it's more discussion from selectmen on warrant articles. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a good 20 minutes before I have to leave, so let's talk about it. <laughs> I, I think, I, I, and I think that's. That makes a lot of sense. It doesn't surprise me at all, and I think that's probably one of the reasons that um, I, I kind of have picked up on the same thing. And and if we ha can identify what we think is kind of a prudent amount for Warren articles based on our past history, I mean, you could look at these Warren articles for the last five years back, and you can see a bubble year or two, and you can look at the Warren articles on the town report and kind of figure out where they came from and, and, and why there are so many more war articles appointed uh, or approved one year over the next. But in general, I think it, as long as there's nothing out of the ordinary, I mean, we're probably looking at around a $300,000 um, ballpark figure on war articles on, on an average year. I mean, you've gone back a few years. So, but, you know. It's been 330, 370, you know, this yeah. kind of trend. Right, right. So uh, that just might be a kind of a new way to discuss it. If, it. if it makes the grade with what our goals are for Warren article amounts, then then great. If, if not, we would, you know, address it at that time. So. Okay. I'm, I'm ready to... Deal with it ever. Well, I don't know. If I yeah. am somewhat frustrated that I don't know how you're going to do much with it if people put the warrant articles in. They want it on there. I mean, we can say no or whatever, but it's. I don't know the answer. Yeah. In the past, yeah. <coughs> that we've 
that have been petitioned to get on there are like this the circa the health services and things like Starting that. Starting point. Not often do you, the majority of the Warren articles are not petitioned in. Right, you don't get a hundred thousand dollar <laughs> Warren article coming in yeah. the, the big ones were all select board generated. Right. <laughs> well, let me let me ask then. For instance, the starting point. Does that have to go to a town meeting? Do they have to? I mean, do we have to go and they vote on two hundred dollars for starting point? I mean, yeah, that, that has to at the annual town meeting. Yeah, yeah. It has to go to the annual. Town. Anything with a dollar amount. Okay. So they've circulated their Warren article and they've gotten the signatures. Okay. And so okay. then we have weighed in on whether we support the Warren article or not. Okay. Um, and so, you know, it just to, to look at it from a holding down taxes perspective, I think is something that I didn't have a strong feeling we were solid on last year. Well, I got a lot of comments about that too. Yeah. So how did you I feel would, about how it went last year? Did you feel Well, it was kind of my first meeting in a sense. I mean, uh, I had a desire to stand up and say, if you're going to support this, if you're going to say we're going to spend this money as much as everybody here has good ideas. I'm, I mean, they they work hard, they have good ideas and all that, but Pick the old library. If you want to spend sixty thousand dollars a library, it means your taxes are going up. It doesn't mean they're going down. I I think somebody needs to say something about that. I, it's a great idea. I, but you know, the more you say you're going to spend, that money has to come out of somebody's pocket. Now I don't know whether that's what they want to hear or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the answer is, can you put position the selectman in it that might render itself to hold down taxes in, I don't know, better position? If we can do that, I'd say we should do that. Okay. All right. Any thoughts on that? Okay. So be it. So we, it was on the um, action item list. And... I know Suzanne's here and been waiting patiently. And um, Larry is here also. So we need to come to terms with the property maintenance uh, proposal that came to Dr. Carrier uh, and the Garden Committee uh, for the underground piping, for the garden hose, and the electrical wire, the cut which Dr. Carey described to me as being, you know, less than two feet, but it'll be, it's not like it's going to be a three-inch cut. Uh, and the whole thing was uh, going to run us, the, the entire project, $1,080. Larry, you want to kind of recap uh, <coughs> your... your uh, the Conservation Commission's discussions around this matter at your last meeting? Sure. We, we took a vote, and our vote was, uh, I think it was uh, contingent upon you not coming up, finding the money somewhere else, that we would donate $540 if the selectmen were unable to find it somewhere else. And, and I, you, you kind of thought you were going to walk and see if you had you know, some money somewhere that, you know, uh, what was the buildings and maintenance, I think, right. that you were going to look at. And right. so they, 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 were, they were a little reluctant. Uh, the vote was, uh, there were only six members present. It was uh, uh, four to uh, one abstention, four to one, uh -huh. and one abstention. Or one and one. So, it, it, you, know, they, you know, they were a little uncertain about spending money on that. Uh -huh. But but nevertheless, they did vote to go ahead. And if you could not come up with the full 1,080, with the right. Conservation Commission would be 540. Well, I think that you know to to put our general operating budget in perspective. I mean, whether that means we spend 1,080 less on sand and salt or find it somewhere. I mean, in a town, even this small town, the way we operate, that money could probably be found to exist. Will there be two votes up here to support using it for that? I don't know. And so if, if, if but at any rate, 
we're here to tackle this issue, so we'll start. And, and with, we were only going to come up with half of it. Yeah. So, okay. It's kind of here. All right. Go ahead, Susan. Um, I would like to remind you that it's on sale right now. In other words, <laughs> if, we, if we don't do it right now, uh, then if the watering doesn't get done, the garden's not going to look very good. And we have limited resources. I have limited resources for this. I'm not here all the time anymore. And uh, maybe you let the garden go and you can like raise it. I don't know. because. Um, it is a difficulty to keep this going. Um, and uh, so uh, the other thing is that um, in your town maintenance, I understand that the electrical uh, conduit out there is not safe because it is under the ground there, unmarked. And so this project would take care of something that's not even the reason, you know, that doesn't have anything to do with the path either. So um, I think that yes, it's money, but I, you know, that's whatever we all want to spend money. But I think that um, this would do a lot for a limited, you know, a rather uh, limited amount of money, because um, Dr. Carriers worked very hard to manipulate this whole thing, so it didn't cost very much money. Uh, last time when Bob spoke, he said that in order to get somebody to pay, it would be probably nine, uh, nine, $300 an hour, okay? So that would be probably $900 just to get somebody in to pay, never mind all the work that goes into, um, you know, the rest of the doing everything. And um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a, a modern up and coming people, we're right by the bridge, and uh, so it seems to me that it behooves us to make it look good. So everybody says it looks nice, but sometimes it doesn't look all that great if we have a pride here, you know. And so everybody notices it. So I think it's a matter of pride for our town. Thank you. Just qu quickly, that the $300 an hour was to pay, but it was to go underneath that driveway so you wouldn't have to what cut and pave. So that, and that did seem to be kind of cost prohibitive to address it that way. But we'll start with you. Was there, there was some paving project that this was supposed to be um, um, yeah. tied together, dovetail? Yeah, exactly. So it was like they were just going to come over from the old library and just, as long as they were here, you know. When is, when is that being done? Uh, it's, it's being done in the next couple of weeks, so that's why this has come up. And Dr. Carrier, sorry that he hasn't been able to be here the last few times. He has more particulars on this, but um, when he saw how cost prohibitive um, his original idea was, then it just so happened that he was talking to Roger Potter <coughs> and found out that indeed there's going to be a paper here anyway, and so if he, we could do it together, then it's like getting free paving. Otherwise, it's, it would be too much money. <coughs> Um, I've always said that I'm always impressed with the dedication of people at Jackson and that they work very hard and their ideas are all good, but I don't know how else to say this except I won't support it. Just not going to spend that kind of money to do that right now. If you want to do it, you take it to the town, you know, and at the meeting and do a warrant article and if the town supports it, it's fine. I just can't do it sitting here. You feel the same way? Uh, what do we get from monies and maintenance? Oh, I don't have the exact dollar amount, but I mean, we have enough. You're familiar enough with it to know roughly what was in there. I mean, was well, the balance in there right now, I think it's like 15000 Right, right. I mean, we, we, we don't have, we don't have uh, work plans to, to zero that out, if that's what you would want. You mean work plans? Well, we don't have we don't have plans to use that kind of money by the end of the year. There's nothing on the books in terms of five hundred bucks. I don't see a, a real issue with it personally. If we can afford it, then you're going to have to make the motion. Make the motion to spend five hundred and forty dollars to. 
joined in the commission, the Conservation Commission, to uh, come up with the $1,080 to fund said project. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion passes. <clears throat> so we'll work with the group and I think, you know, we're, we definitely want to make sure that that old library project is on schedule to happen this spring because that was not a 100% certainty as of last week. So I, I would just say that if, if that's on hold, it doesn't make sense to run this through this year. Uh, but, but we'll... The whole, the whole thing yeah. Got your vote. <coughs> yeah. Got your vote. Right. And, and thank you for coming. I appreciate you coming and representing thank the project. Thank you for all the time you've given to this. Thank you. Well, we're paid a lot of money to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I can come back. <laughs> Touche. All uh, right. Um, we'll just kind of move on. And um, old business, or we, we've already. Taking care of that prospect farm issue. There was nothing else, Larry. I hope not. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Um, any other public comment? Um, do you, quickly, do you feel you need to reply to that letter that you received? I didn't ask for a reply. Okay. What, what do you right. guys think? But the white man. The white man. Well, you got a letter oh, about the, the white man and parts in town. <laughs> if you need to reply to it. I, I just go right ahead, and, and I'll I'll make sure that white man's not there. But that's what happens when you try to take away old off-road vehicles and hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think that it was addressed in the meeting. I don't know. Do you need to respond? Okay. Unless I didn't know. Okay. okay. Do you feel there needs to be a direct All response? Right, then I'll just solve it. So that thank you. Need to. All right. Excellent. Um, any other items before we entertain a motion to adjourn? Anybody like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Okay, one second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. Did you get my good side? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> this was the um, uh, abatement for the interest. And I don't like it being this dark. Karen was mistaken. Dark.